All right. Hey, everyone. This is Dave here, East Rosebud Fly and Tackle, Billings, Montana. Today we're going to tie some ant patterns for you. Over the course of the next few videos, I'll tie several different types for you. A little background. Ants, of course, are everywhere. They're a very social insect, very much like bees. The ants make their colonies underground. And there are three different types. There's the queen ant, who does nothing but lay eggs her whole life. There's the drone, which is the male and is only produced when the uh, certain times of the year. Then there's the worker ants that do the work. So the uh, underground, the queen ant, of course, has her own chamber. She's attended to by the worker ants who take the eggs, put them in cells, feed them, take care of the pupa, all of that. When the colony gets too big or when they're starting to get short on food, then the queen ant will lay special eggs to make other queen ants. They're fed a special food called royal jelly, so they develop into fertile females. These females will leave the hive in a swarm accompanied by the uh, male ants, the drones, and all they do is reproduce with the females. So the female, several of these drones, and many worker ants will fly out in huge clouds. I mean, they can number in the hundreds of thousands, and they're looking for a new territory to settle in. Once the queen is fertilized, then she drops to the ground, she bites her wings off, they tunnel down, and she starts a new colony. Now, ants are, of course, highly available when they swarm, and um, they're also very important in alpine lakes. Ants love aspen groves. The wood is soft, they, they uh, secrete a lot of sap, and these ants can be carried on these thermal updrafts for thousands and thousands of feet. So they can land on these alpine lakes in amazing numbers, and the fish just go nuts. And of course, then you have the rest of the summer when you have ants all over the streamside grasses and the trees, and they're constantly falling into the water. And for some reason, trout love ants. They'll go out of their way for an ant. I've seen them do it many times. There's a lot of theories about why. Um, I have my own idea. Ants, like all the hymenopteras, the beetles, or excuse me, the bees, the wasps, ants all have formic acid. And uh, so I decided to eat an ant one day just to see. And uh, they're actually very tart, very much like a pickle. So maybe that's what uh, attracts the trout. It's just, just a little something different in their diet. But anyway, they like ants, and they ant like ants a lot. So you should always have some ants in your fly book. Uh, just to show you, in case you're afraid that you can tie an ant that's too big, this is a carpenter ant, which I took off of my front doorstep. Carpenter ant is a very common ant anywhere there's wood. And you can see how big that guy is. Of course, ants come in all sizes, from sizes that are so small they can't be imitated, all the way up to huge ones like this. And note where the wings end at the end of the abdomen. When I tie flying ants for you, that'll be important. And of course, ants, uh, like all terrestrials, don't float well. When they hit the water, they start to sink. They don't land on the meniscus, they land in the meniscus. Their um, breathing apparatuses are quickly uh, drowned by the water, and so they sink fairly quickly. And of course, all trout are more comfortable eating food subsurface than on the surface. So a drowned ant can be a very, very good pop uh, pattern. You can fish that as a trailer off of a dry fly, any kind of a dry fly. So the first one I'm going to tie for you today is just a, a sunken ant. It's just a simple soft hackle. I'm just going to be using a 1x long dry fly hook. This happens to be a size 14. And this is 80 black vivas thread. The most common colors in ants, of course, are black and brown. But we also have fire ants that have a red abdomen and a black head on them. So we're just going to start our thread here about mid shank and wrap it back in a nice smooth base and we're going to come forward a couple of wraps as you saw on the other ant the abdomen called the gaster is quite prominent and is a big trigger for trout then you have the very narrow called the pedicel between the head and the thorax and then you have the head itself now on smaller sizes, particularly 18s, 20s, and farther down, 
I'll just use I'll just use thread to make the abdomen and the uh, thorax on the fly. But um, when you get into larger sizes, it's very difficult to get a nice ball of thread that'll stay together. I like to use this Fox Squirrel or Squirrel Dubbing, SLF Squirrel Dubbing. We have it in all colors. We also have it in an assortment kit. It has a nice bushy appearance to it, and it also helps to build that abdomen up quickly. So I add a little extra dubbing wax to the thread to help build this ball. And as you saw on the, on the real live ant, we want to make this fairly buggy. So we'll start there right about the hook point, and then we're simply going to make some wraps. You can make X wraps, you can do whatever you like, but we want to make that, that gaster as heavy as we can with the thread that we're using. A little bit more, I think. In my opinion, uh, squirrel dubbing is one of the least utilized dubbings out there, and it's really a fantastic dubbing. It has a lot of guard hairs in it. It gives you a very nice spiky appearance, and it also helps to trap some air bubbles. Okay, so we have our gaster. We want to keep this pedestal area very thin. I'm going to come up to the head and back with my thread and then right about the middle. You can use a variety of things. For a sunken ant I like to use soft hackle. This is just a hen neck soft hackle. We're going to tie it in just like you would any soft hackle. I'm going to go ahead and find a division point here and stroke the fibers back until I get a nice clear division point. I like to cut off the first few hackles. I tie it with the shiny side or the concave side up. We're going to wrap the hackle after we tie it in back to the thread. And since this side will be the first side that's down against the hook, I like to go ahead and cut off just a few of those hackles so that that first wrap lays smoothly. So we'll tie it right in at the division point on that hackle. Make just a few wraps back towards the abdomen. Cut off our tip. And then we'll get our hackle pliers on here. Make sure you have the stem, not the feather itself. And then we're going to wrap this. And as you wrap, make sure that the feather the hackles are facing backwards. And just kind of, you can see how that first wrap, because I took those hackles off, lays nice and smooth instead of trapping those hackles. And just continue to stroke these hackles back as you wrap them. We don't need many turns. An ant only has six legs. All right. But we do want some movement, and that's the key to any soft hackle, of course, is movement underwater. So one thread wrap to secure the hackle, one thread wrap through the middle of the hackle to secure it, and one thread wrap at the very beginning. Now we clip off the butt of the hackle. And uh, I really like, instead of a regular soft hackle where I fold this back, I really like this to be disarrayed. I want it to look like uh, an insect that's just dead and floating along. So we're going to leave it just like that. Then we're going to go ahead and dub a smaller head, a little more wax on the thread. This time we're going to dub it a little finer than we did the gaster. But the proportions are important. You certainly want to make sure that the gaster or the abdomen is much fuller than the head. And then right in front of the hackle, we want to leave a little bit of room in the hook eye for tie down. And then a whip finish. 
Now if you really want to assist this ant in sinking, a very simple trick is to just get your head cement and soak the dubbed areas with head cement. This will add weight to the fly, it will also add a lot of durability. Now it will take a little time for this fly to finally dry, but I like to do this on my sunken ant patterns. Give them a little weight without uh, any more bulk. There you have it. Very simple sunken ant pattern. Tie some, keep them in your fly box. Remember, anytime the weather is warm, the ants are out. Give them a try. Thanks for joining. As always, any questions or comments, don't hesitate to contact us. See you next time.